Hey everyone, this is Christine Vallis, and I'm blessed to join you guys once again as we flip over God's calendar. Coming up is the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical month we're entering into. It is the month of Tammuz. And in this month, the Lord is reminding us of the importance of guarding our hearts. And one of the ways we can guard our hearts is by guarding our eyes. So I pray the eyes of your heart are enlightened as you watch the teaching and be blessed as you move with him into this new month and season. Blessings, guys. Hello and welcome to the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical month that we are entering into. It is the biblical month of Tammuz. And Tammuz is the fourth month in God's spiritual calendar. And the number four in Hebrew is connected to a picture of a door. And so it's as if here the door is opening wide, not only into a whole new month, but into the whole new season of summer. And I'm sure a lot of us are excited about that. The season of summer, which is also referred to as the holiday of the eyes because there's so much to look at. Everything's in full bloom. Everyone is getting up. Everyone is getting out. And so as we open the door into this new month of Tammuz and into this new season of summer, I sense the Lord saying this, watch what you watch. Keep your eyes on me, for I do not change, because there is more than meets the natural eye. See things from my heavenly perspective, and do not fear, but be of good courage. I am for you, so seek first my kingdom, and everything will be added unto you, and you have a hope and a future in me. My name is Christine Vallis, and I'm blessed to uncover the Lord's prophetic calendar with you guys in real time. So thanks so much for tuning in, and I pray that you are blessed by this teaching. So as we open up our doors and our eyes here in the month of Tammuz, the Lord is encouraging us to guard our eyes and guard our heart. And he is highlighting this important truth here in the month of Tammuz because it's here in this month where two events in biblical history occurred. And these two events were always meant to be a blessing. But Israel lost their focus and took their eyes off the Lord and on to their circumstances. Now these events are probably very familiar to most of us, but we probably didn't know that they happened here in the month of Tammuz. But the Lord wants us to learn from the Israelites and from their experience, as 1 Corinthians 10, 6 and 7 says, these things in the Old Testament were for our example so that we can learn from them, especially from these two events that we're going to be talking about. So the first event is in the book of Exodus. If you want to break out your Bible, it's Exodus 32. And this is when Moses came down Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments and also to unveil the plans and so that they could start working on the tabernacle. This was the place where God could dwell with his people because that was his heart's desire. So this was meant to be a glorious new beginning for the Israelites. So in Exodus 32, most of us know the story, but I encourage you to read it because I'm sure God wants to illuminate some new things for you to see. But Moses was up on Mount Sinai, right? The children of Israel were at the base of the mountain and they were waiting and basically they grew impatient, they grew fearful, they took their eyes off the Lord and onto their circumstances and onto the clock. And you know, it didn't take much as we read in Exodus 32, 7 for them to corrupt themselves when they decided to make themselves a God to lead them. And so Moses descended Mount Sinai, he heard singing, he saw them worshiping the infamous golden calf. And they said, this is the God who brought us out of Egypt. And Moses could not believe his eyes. He threw down the Ten Commandments. He crushed and burned the golden calf. And he crushed it into a powder and made the Hebrews drink it. But the sad thing is, guys, this day was meant to be for fellowship, celebration, to start construction of the tabernacle. But instead, it turned into a day of weeping and 3,000 people perished, all because they turned their eyes off of the Lord 
and onto an idol that was made from Egyptian golden earrings. So the Lord is reminding us the importance of our focus and where we set our physical eyes because our eyes are like lenses in a camera and they focus on a subject and we take an image and those images are seeds and those seeds take root in our heart, whether they're good or bad. And so when we guard our eyes, we guard our heart. Proverbs 4.23 says, above all else, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it flows all the issues of life. So a few insights to take away from the story here of the golden calf. John 10.10 reminds us that the enemy is a thief, right? He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus comes to give us life and that abundantly. But we can expect the enemy to steal from us. And in this month, perhaps he's going to try and steal our attention by distracting our eyes off of the Lord, onto the clock, onto our circum circumstances, and telling us God is late, he won't come through. And then he'll start pressuring us to take matters into our own hands and worship another God, often ourselves, right? Just like the Israelites did. But where did that get them? Well, Psalm 115 says that they became like the idol they created. They have mouths that don't speak. They have eyes and don't see. They have ears and don't hear. But Matthew 13 says that our eyes are blessed because they see and our ears are blessed because we hear. So guys, let's use our God-given eyes and our ability to see to focus on the Lord himself, to focus on the good. We have to watch what we watch. It makes a difference. We have to choose to focus on him. And you know, our eyes are all also like magnifying glasses. It magnifies whatever we focus on, good or bad, again. So are we focusing on the good news of God's word or the bad news of the world? And in all of our zooming, why not zoom on him, right? And magnify the Lord, who he is and who we are in him, because we become what we behold. And also guys, we can choose patience over haste. Patience is a fruit of the spirit. And so as believers, we have all the patience in our spirit to the full. We have patience. So the Lord never rushes us and he's not the author of confusion. So let us look from the eyes of our spirit and watch his patience manifest in our very lives. So now the last takeaway from the story of the golden calf is to discover God's vision for the provision that he gives us. Now, God gave the Israelites great plunder when they left slavery out of Egypt, and the gold that they went away with was meant to build the tabernacle so that he could dwell with them and, and have fellowship with them. But instead, they used it for a worthless idol, the golden calf. And what happened? It left them alone in the dust. So his extravagant provision, as we learned about last month in the month of Savan, is for his awesome vision for our lives, not our own, because our own is usually selfish and usually small. And so God's vision for us is something beyond our own ability. And he wants to partner with us that he will bless us and so that we can be a blessing to others. So let's take time and let's see where the Lord wants us to invest the provision that he's given us, whether it's our money, our time, or other resources, because he knows the plans he has for us and he delights in revealing them to us. So let's take courage and make any necessary changes as he leads, because his vision is better and bigger than our very own. Okay, now let's focus on the second event that happened here in the month of Tammuz, and you can find this in Numbers chapter 13. And it's here when Moses sent out the 12 spies. It's here right in this month when that 40-day search of the promised land began. And so before uh, they began their search, Moses directed them to spy out the land, and actually he told them to go up to a mountain, which I believe gives a 
heavenly perspective and survey the land and all the people and go in and search out the land and see if it is good or bad. And Moses' last instru instructions to them were, be of good courage and bring back the fruit of the land. So they returned after 40 days and they all agreed and they reported that it was an exceedingly good land. Well, it was the promised land, right? And it was flowing with milk and honey because they did bring back fruit from the Valley of Eshkol. And it was abounding with fruit so big that it actually took two men to carry one cluster of grapes suspended on a pole between them. And you know, interesting to note is that that valley still yields the finest grapes, figs, and pomegranates in the nation. And so it's interesting to see that God also sent them out during the season of the first ripe grapes. So everything was in full bloom. And this is such a contrast from where they were coming from. They were living in the wilderness and yes, they had manna and they had water, but they did not have wine and they did not have grapes and, and, and figs and pomegranates. So God was showing them the great abundance that he had for them. But despite all of that exceeding goodness, the 10 spies caused doubt, fear, and confusion by casting their own conclusions. And in Numbers 13, 32 says that they then spoke an evil report of the giants in the land. And they created what if scenarios that will be eaten alive. And we were like grasshoppers in our sight and even in their sight. But there were two leaders, Joshua and Caleb, that had a different spirit. They saw with the eyes of their heart. And Joshua and Caleb, they didn't deny the obstacles in the land, but they focused on God's promise, his power, his presence, and his provision. And in Numbers 14, 9, we see Joshua and Caleb encourage the people, and they said, don't rebel against the Lord, and don't be afraid of the people in the land, for they are bread for us. So they didn't call them giants, they called them bread. And then it goes on to say that their defense has departed them. So fear not, the Lord is with us and he has given us this land. He has given us his success to go in and possess the land. But despite that good report of Joshua and Caleb, the Israelites rebelled against Moses and they rebelled against God and they settled in unbelief and they believed the fake news from the 10 spies network and that entire generation except Joshua and Caleb died in the wilderness and they never saw the promised land. So guys, in real time, as we survey the land around us, there may be giants in the land, but let's not allow the obstacles in our promised land prevent us from possessing the land that he has for us. And as Joshua and Caleb told the people, God is saying to us, don't be afraid, be of good courage, for the enemy's protection has departed. In other words, the enemy is defeated, right? Because of what Jesus has done, the enemy is defeated. And if God's presence was with them, how much more is his presence with us? Here in the new covenant, as believers, we have the Holy Spirit within us 24 seven. And that is why guys, we are are more than conquerors in Christ through him who loved us. And there is nothing that can separate us from his love. So guys, his land of promises for us is full of abundance and it's ours for the taking. And it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. But we have to see with the eyes of our heart, right? Like Joshua and Caleb. And so our heart has eyes, but how do we see with the eyes of our heart? Well, 2 Corinthians 4, 18 says that we do not look at the things that are seen, but we look at the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen, they are eternal. So we see with the eyes of our heart, when we see the unseen, when we see in the spiritual realm, because everything that we see was made from the unseen. And the reality is that the spiritual world trumps the natural. So that's why we have to look and look again.
again with the eyes of our heart and view things from his eternal perspective. And as we do, guys, we will move forward in his confidence and in his blessings. Now, again, we know the enemy is a thief, so he will try to steal our true identity in Christ as believers, or at least blind us to it. And why is this? It's because he knows that our perspective comes from our identity. So the question is, are we looking at ourselves as new creations in Christ as believers, or are we looking at ourselves in the natural and saying, well, I'm just human, or I'm a grasshopper? <laughs> you know, guys, as believers, we are one-third Holy Ghost. And if we don't know who we are in Christ, we will fall for anything. And if we don't allow the Word of God to transform us, as it talks about in Romans 12, the world will conform us and squeeze us into its mold. And so we won't just look like the world, we will think like the world, see like the world, and act like the world. And this conformity that the world brings also brings excuses, fears, and an attitude of lack. And meanwhile, the Word of God transforms us from the inside out and gives us confidence in our true identity that we are loved, that we are favored, that we are empowered, that we are righteous. And as He is, so we are in this world. And He is for us, so who can be against us? And that's why, guys, it is so important that His Word become a mirror that we not only look to, but we look out for. From. Now there is a three week period that begins in this month and it's known as between the straits. And there's two dates that bookend this time period. The first is when Moses came down with the Ten Commandments. And the second date is when the spies returned from searching out the promised land. And those dates on the calendar are Tammuz 18, through the ninth of Av. And now historically, this is a time where the Lord funnels his people from one great expanse into a narrow place only to bring us out on the other side into a greater expanse that is better than before. And so when I first heard about this between the streets and I was drawing this and I was kind of looking at this period, I thought, well, that doesn't look like a very pleasant um, place to move through. But my friend had to wake me up and tell me to look and look again because straight skies are actually straights of protection. And this is highlighted by the Hebrew letter connected to this month. Right here is the letter Het, which is a value of eight, which is new beginnings, and it is also a picture of a fence. So this time period between the straits really is a picture of God's protection like a fence protecting us and moving us into a new beginning. Now also, straights are known to be shortcuts. So as we fix our eyes on him, guys, we save time. So we don't need to go around the whole continent or the whole mountain over and over. So let's slow our pace as we move through the straights. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus. And as we do, he will navigate us straight through into the land of promises that he has for us. Now the heavens declare the glory of the Lord and the gospel is on circuit over our heads and all of the constellations point to Messiah and our victory in him. So this month it is connected to the constellation Cancer. So the Lord highlighted two things which I'd like to share with you. So the first thing is that Cancer is actually the picture of a crab. And so we see that depicted here on the chalkboard. So what do you see when you look here, if you can see this crab? Well, you see a hard shell and big eyes and big claws. And so I believe the Lord is calling us to keep the eyes of our heart wide open, magnifying him and magnifying his word, just like Joshua and Caleb did. And he's also calling us not to harden our hearts toward him, like the 10 spies did in unbelief, but actually use that ability to harden our hearts toward the enemy, and even including cancer itself and any other sickness. And you know, the revelation I also had was that this is a picture of James 4, 7 that says, submit to God, basically soften your heart 
to the Lord and keep your eyes on him. Agree with what he says about himself and who we are in him. Resist the devil or harden your heart toward the devil by standing firm in who God is and who we are in him. And in that confidence of our righteousness that rises up within us, that will cause the enemy to flee. And that is awesome. So can we see how all the constellations point to Messiah and the good news of the gospel? Now, the second thing to note is that the Hebrew name for this constellation is called Sartan. And that also means film strip in Hebrew. And that is why Tammuz is often referred to as the film strip month. So in this month, let's consider stopping the film projector of our lives because life moves so fast and we often look at things with our natural eyes, but take that reel of film of our lives off of the projector and take time to look and look again frame by frame as the Lord highlights because you know hindsight is 2020 especially when we look with our spiritual eyes now sartan also means to remove the mud and I thought well how does this connect but actually as someone who wears glasses it suddenly hit me that you know sometimes I think that I am seeing clearly through these glasses until I take them off and I clean them, right? And so it's like muds on there. Or, or when you're driving and you have your windshield and you think it's fine until you clean it, then you can see clearly, right? So the enemy doesn't want us to see clearly. So he will continually throw mud in our face, in our view, whether it be our past or our present or whatever he can to get our eyes off of our true identity. And meanwhile, guys, Jesus has cleansed us. And as he is, so we are in this world. And you know, Hollywood and the media talking about films, also so much of it pollutes the eyes of our heart and creates these false images of what it is to be normal. But the reality, guys, is that life is in him, right? Jesus says, my words are spirit and life, and he's come to give us life and life abundantly and that is seeing clearly and that is coming to our senses now every month has a body part and you would think it would be the eye in this month but it is not it is actually the right hand and its finger and so we're gonna see now how this is connected so when we extend a right hand we usually do so in greeting someone or in shaking hands with someone right so the Lord is reminding us to watch our handshakes and to take covenant relationships seriously and thinking about the straits you know straits were, were used for trade routes and they are places where deals are made so let's not shake on a deal in haste but let's move with the Lord in patience and be reminded of Psalm 32 8 that promises the Lord will counsel us with his eye so let's keep our eyes on him guys and get our cues from him and he will confirm and bless the work and shakes of our hands now the lord is also pointing out our right pointer finger and you know our right pointer finger points where we're looking it directs our sight even as i point to the chalkboard right i'm showing you where to focus and so many are pointing fingers to look here and to look here. And so where is our gaze? Because we become what we behold, right? And you know, it's easy to point a finger at others, but the truth is, guys, that our own fingers are directing the eyes of our heart all day long with every swipe we make on the phone right? Is this not true? So let's take every swipe captive to the obedience of Christ, right? And let's follow those that are pointing to Jesus and let's point other people to him and to his perspective and to his word and most importantly to his great love for us. And lastly, on this point, I love the ancient Hebrew wedding tradition where the bride wears her wedding band on her right index 
finger and that points her gaze to her bridegroom. So how much more, guys, as the bride of Christ, he bids us to do the same. So let's stay single focused and keep our eyes on our beloved kinsman redeemer and his great love for us. So lastly, even the tribe of this month tells us where to set our gaze. It is the tribe of Reuben, whose name means behold a son. And so I can't help but think about beholding the son Jesus. Now Reuben was the firstborn of Jacob and Leah, but he lost his inheritance to Joseph because he got his eyes off of the Lord and onto his father's concubine. And that hasty decision led to lasting repercussions. But in Genesis 37, we see he softened his heart to the Lord. And instead of extending bitterness to Joseph, Reuben extended protection and compassion. And so there are many lessons that we can learn from Reuben, but most importantly, guarding our eyes and our heart. And if we lose our focus, all we have to do is turn our eyes to Jesus so we can be encouraged, guys, because he delights in restoring and refocusing our hearts and lives to him. So in closing, guys, we can open up our doors into this new month and season and look out with patience and with good courage as we open wide the eyes of our heart and keep them fixed on Jesus. And so, Lord, we ask you to continue to enlighten the eyes of our heart so that we can see you more and more clearly, Lord, and how great your love is for us and, and the wonderful future that you have for us. And Lord, may that love propel us to follow you anywhere, anytime, and even into that land of promises that you have for us, even here and even now. So guys, if you're wondering where God's eyes are in all of this, well, the word tells us in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, for the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth so that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. That is awesome. Thank you, Lord, that your eyes are upon us for good. And thank you guys for your time to watch, your eyes to be focused here. I pray that you were blessed by this teaching and happy to muse in Jesus.